Good morning. Welcome in the name of the Lord. It's a pleasure to have you here in worship with us today. As we get started, just a number of announcements that I'm going to have. For, oh, think, yes, uh, Pastor, before we get started with the service today, as uh, most of you know, the month of October is uh, Clergy Appreciation Month. So the church council and also the members of First St. Paul's would like to recognize our pastors. And so, Joel, today we'd like to give you just a little uh, appreciation of what you do for us throughout the year. And, um, so at this time, I'd like to present, it's not a lot, but it's something for you. Thank you very much. That's very generous. I can assure you that um, this last year, I feel very appreciated by this congregation. So anyway, um, as we continue, a number of announcements that we have. Um, for you today. Uh, first of all, if you're kind of looking through your bulletin, you're going to notice that um, we do need some volunteers that would be willing to come and help us set up uh, for the rally dinner that happens on Tuesday, November 10th out at the fairgrounds, and you know it's going to be a big, good time when the announcement says, please make sure that you bring rags and buckets. <laughs> right. So, all right, um, in addition to that, if you are interested in running for church council, or if you are interested in running for the foundation board, we are looking for some people who would be um, willing to be uh, nominated for that. Uh, also, you will notice that in the bulletins, there is a list of individuals who are joining our congregation this week. And so if um, you see any of those folks around, uh, make sure that you welcome them. If you see any of those folks around, uh, make sure that you invite them to some of the activities of which you are a part so that we can kind of tie us all in and together on that. Um, lastly, let me just lift up two other announcements that I have for you. At 2 o'clock today, the Frog Group, that's the 4th through 6th graders, are going to be meeting in the Christian Underground. And at 6.30 this evening, the Oreo Group, that is the Junior High Group, is going to be meeting um, down in the Christian Underground to begin with. And so we have both of those youth activities that are taking place. And lastly, there is one sheet in your bulletin that is asking from the outreach committee to make sure that if you have any kids that are in college or in graduate school or any of those types of things that um, you would make sure that you write down their name and their address so that we can kind of get in touch with them periodically over the course of the next year. I trust that you can read over the other announcements in the bulletins or in the newsletters with the congregation please stand. Peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please share that peace with one another. continues with the order for confession and forgiveness as followed from the front cover of your bullet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves in the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The opening hymn is hymn number 597. Hymn number 597.
light, shine in our hearts. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal compassion, have mercy on us. Turn us to seek your face and enable us to reflect your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
reading for you today may be followed from page 871. Page 871 in the Bibles that are before you in the pew racks. I will be reading from the Gospel according to John, the 8th chapter, beginning with the 31st verse. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a permanent place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you. Please remain standing. The hymn is number 517. Sometimes people aren't really interested in what happened 500 years ago. So let me see if I can simply put it this way. Y'all can finish the quote for me. Those who fail to learn from history are doomed. That's right. Those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. So, 
when we stand up here and preach about what happened in ancient Israel some three or four or five thousand years ago, or when we study the New Testament and the life of Jesus and the letters of Paul. It's not just because we want to know about what Jesus said or did, although we do. But it's not just that. And it's not just that we want to know the history of Christianity from the first century. Or when we talk about things like Reformation Day or the exploits of Martin Luther. It's not just that we want to understand the origin of our denomination or what happened in Germany 500 years ago. It's that we know. We know that those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat the same things that went on and we don't want to. And that's why we study and that's why we know and that's why we learn because really that makes it not about yesterday but it makes it about today and about tomorrow. And so we can take a look at some of the mistakes that have been made in the past and what God has done in relation to God's people about those. It's actually kind of interesting for me today when I took a look at the text that comes from Jeremiah. Mistakes certainly were made by God's people in the past. In that Old Testament lesson that we have before today, God uses interesting language, actually great language, to describe his relationship with his people. God talks about things like that he's Israel's husband, which puts us in a relationship with one another like that of marriage, being committed to one another, where we have made lifelong promises to one another. God talks about this as being a covenant, which once again brings us back to that language of unconditional promises. And it's good that God is making those types of terms considering what was going on in the world then and what's going on in the world now. Because in Jeremiah's time, what he was trying to remind the people was is that God was faithful to his promises even if we weren't faithful back to God all the time. And the people needed to know that God was going to be faithful because, quite frankly, in Jeremiah's day, the Mideast was a hotbed of instability. Thank God we've got that under control now, huh? <laughs> Actually, back then, there was um, Syria to the northeast. There were the Moabites and the Ammonites. To the east, there were the Edomites that were towards the south. And there were the Philistines that were along the coast and towards the southwest. And Israel felt a little bit like they were surrounded by folks who wanted to expand their nation states and were concerned about whether or not their nation states would survive. But in the great background of all of this was that there were other great empires of the day. There was Egypt to the far south and there was Assyria and Babylon to the north and they worried about whether they were going to get swallowed or whether or not they were going to be defeated. And people did what people always do. They thought they could figure it out on their own. So consequently, some of the people in Jeremiah's day said, if there's all of these other little states that are around here, I know that we're fighting and feuding with one another, but if we would just go ahead and make wonderful political alliances and become smart, there would be strength that would take place within those numbers that we would have, and we would be able to keep the empires of that day from being able to stand against us. And other people were saying, no, 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 what you need to do is you need to just resign, and you need to go ahead and just acquiesce, because if we can go ahead and do those things in a way in which they won't have to fight against us, but we just give in, so that we can maybe strike a good enough deal or maybe play good enough political gamesmanship. Of course, we don't have any of those problems today either, right? Of 
rather than bore you with all of the idiosyncrasies of that time, let's just say that Jeremiah advocated a different strategy, a different solution. His solution was simply this. Return to God. Stop relying on yourselves or on your own strength or on your own smarts or on your own cunning or on your own maneuvering, but turn to God who has proven, who has proven that he is faithful to the promises and the covenants that he had made. And if you don't think that you can rely on that facing empires, remember, he traces back some of the history in that text of how before God has brought them out of the land of Egypt, which basically lets them know God has brought empires to their knees in being faithful to his people before. Now, if you're not sure yourself whether or not you would like to trust in God and whether or not you believe that he's been faithful to his covenants, let me just throw something out there for you to consider. In ethnicity, in culture, and in religion. Out of all of those folks that I enlisted before, when was the last time y'all met a Philistine? Or an Ammonite? Or an Edomite? Or a Babylonian? Or an Assyrian? I suppose you could tell me that you could still meet an Egyptian, but I will tell you that they're not worshiping Ra anymore. But I can still show you an Israelite. I guess we call them Jews today. But when God says that he has been faithful to his covenants and that he has preserved his people in the midst of all of those things that were going on, the fact of the matter is, is it's true. So God has tried to give a new tactic, a new strategy, a new way to bring us back. Because we keep falling away just like the Israelites did. And so consequently, God has used all kinds of ways to bring us back. He has used prophets. Some of them were named Jeremiah or Ezekiel or Daniel or Hosea or my personal favorite, Joel. <laughs> he has used prophets in order to try to bring us back. Some of them had the names of Elijah or Elisha or Samuel. I would also say that God didn't end his activity in the world with the biblical history, he has called people back to himself. The same way that Jeremiah was calling people back to God, simply saying, rely on me, rely on me, not on yourselves. And he's done that through people like Martin Luther. Or through people like Martin Luther King Jr. Who took on the smart folks and the powerful folks of their day. And God made new covenants with us through Jesus Christ in order to bring us back so that we would act like we were in this covenant, this marriage relationship with him. You see, what I guess I'm saying is, is that the problem has always been the same. When things start to get tough, people have always acted in the same way. We kind of look up at God and we say, we're good, we've got this one. We think we're strong, we think we're powerful, we think we're capable, we think we're smart, we think we're cunning. Nothing's changed. In the Garden of Eden, the big temptation was that we thought we could be like God. We thought we got this one. In the Tower of Babel, we thought we could build something high enough that we would live like God. The kings of Israel, thought they could make laws because they were powerful like God. And when we face our own struggles today, sometimes, perhaps too often, we think, we've got this one. The problem is the same. But of course, if the problem is the same, the solution is the same as well. 
is the one that was proposed by Jeremiah. Live as people who know that God is our God and that we are his people. Live as folks that know that the law of the Lord is not just written anymore on stone tablets, but written in your hearts. You all know this, don't you? When was the last time you were about to do something? You were faced with a situation that was going on, and what you decided was, I think I want to do this, and your heart told you that's not right. The solution is the same. Know God so that we from therefore know his forgiveness from the things that we do, from our pride and from our arrogance and from our conceit. Now, here's the deal. If we continue to fall away, and I believe we do, then we need to continue to be reformed and called back, which I also believe needs to happen. And if that's the case in our society, just as it was then, then congratulations. You are Jeremiah. You are the ones called to let the folks know where they need to turn and what they need to do. Congratulations, you are Martin Luther. You are the ones called to stand up and say, here I stand, despite what's going on around me. You are the ones. It's Reformation Day. It's not about history. It's about now. And tomorrow. But the reason that we study history is because those who fail to learn from history are condemned to repeat it. I think that means we have a mission. Let's stand as we sing the hymn number 652.
I don't believe that there are very many people here from this class, but just in case I missed anyone, I'm going to go ahead and read out the names of those individuals who are joining our congregation this week. Mark and Cash Evans, Kimberly Grothen, Kathy Handler, Jerry and Deb Langer, Ashley Connor and Nibia Long, and Isaac and Cole Wheelbarger, Eric, Jessica, and Jediah Manka, Brandon Miller, Cindy Montague, Nick, Joey, Kennedy, and Stella Montague, Patrick, Oliver, Edwin, Nyman, and Amanda Song. So, here we are. The other two are around here somewhere. Okay, very good. Are they coming? Oh, here they come. These folks have come to us from other congregation and desire to transfer their membership into our community of faith. We want you to know that we welcome you as members of First St. Paul Lutheran Church to join with us in worshiping God and hearing his word and sharing his supper and proclaiming the good news of God through Christ in word and deed and serving all people according to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we hope that you would also change us. We hope that you would also be individuals who would inspire us and challenge us because, well, a reading from Romans goes like this. Just as each of our bodies has several parts and each part has a separate function, so all of us in union with Christ form one body. And as parts of it, we belong to each other, and though our gifts differ according to the grace given to us. And then he goes on to say, if your gift is this, do that. If your gift is that, do this. And so we would encourage you, we would encourage you to make use of those things with us. Can we pray for them? We thank you, Lord, for bringing these new people into our congregation. By your life-giving power, bind us to each other in you, strengthen us for service, support all of us in our days, and bring us at last to the day when all your children will be one in you and will be all in all. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And here's your certificate. Thank you. Right. We can acknowledge that. That would be appropriate. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Made alive with Christ, with God in Christ, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. I will end each petition with, Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. Uniting God, join together the many and varied voices of your church into one great voice, so that the world may hear the good news of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uphold the expansive network of your creation as birds migrate and animals prepare for hibernation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bend our ears to hear the cries of those who long for justice and inclusion. Teach us to listen and respond. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send your spirit to stir up healing and wholeness where there is illness, conflict between neighbors, war, or any kind of suffering. Give relief to all who are in need, especially Levon Barth. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Breathe your reforming spirit into the church today. Open us to receive the newness ever present in your ancient gifts, and call us to action by your gracious and freeing word. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. For all your holy ones baptized into the name of the Holy Trinity, especially Maisie Faith, may all new born anew in the waters of grace eagerly respond to your call to serve. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Let us pray for Thomas Stern and Kelsey Luce, who were united in marriage this weekend. Keep them faithful to each other and to you. Fill them with such love and joy that they may build a home of peace and welcome. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, may we show your joy by embracing those who join our congregation today. Mark and Cash Evans, Kimberly Grosen, Kathy Handler, Jerry and Deb Langer, Ashley Connor and Nivia Long, Isaac Cole Wheelbarger, Eric, Jessica, and Jediah Maka, Brandon Miller, Cindy, Cindy Montague, Nick, Jody, Kennedy, and Stella Montague, Patrick, Oliver, Edwin Nyman, and Amanda Sol Solom. Keep us together in your spirit as we share in the work you have prepared for us in this place. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. You are the eternal source of eternal salvation. We remember before you the faithful witnesses who have gone before us, especially Mike Rothfuss and the daughter of Bob Kent, and now rest forever in your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. You have done great things in the lives of the saints. Reveal to us the glorious works you do every day, that we recognize your kingdom when it comes. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gather these concerns and all who are in need into your abundant care, O God, remembering your promise of mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. The closing hymn is number 504, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
said, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.